you so much. Uh, so as, as has been said, uh, my name is Raquel Velez. I'm Rockbot on all of the things. Uh, and I am a senior software developer at NPM Inc. You may have heard of NPM. You use it to install all of your wonderful JavaScript things. Uh, I am honored to be able to work there. If I can answer any questions or give you stickers, please let me know. I have answers and stickers. Uh, so let's get started. On a scale of fist to high five, where would you rate yourself as a developer? Where, where a fist is, I'm just figuring out this whole JavaScript thing, I think I know what a variable is, I'm learning about loops, et cetera, et cetera, to I have taught Brendan Eich everything he knows. <laughs> right? And, and you can totally do the Fitbit thing if you want. Like, you could just be like, you know, I'm like a three and a half or whatever. Cool. All right. So you, you can play along too. Feel free to play along. OK, cool. Cool. All right. So I'm, I'm seeing like kind of like beginning in the middle. That's awesome. OK, great. What I'd like to talk about today is how we go from here to here. Because I think a lot of us who are kind of here don't know what this path looks like. And I think those of us who are here forgot what it was like to be here. So let's go through that whole process. Uh, yeah, it's, it's intense. I'm going to use my personal story. This is not going to match everybody's, but I think a lot of the elements are going to be the same. So it all starts out the same for all of us. For whatever reason, we say, I'm going to start learning JavaScript, or insert technology of your choice. But I'm going to start with JavaScript. And whether it's for a business reason or for personal reasons, we say, OK, this JavaScript thing, I'm going to do it. Let's do this. Yes, totally. For me, I used to be a roboticist. I used to build robots, you know. Um, and uh, I said to myself, OK, this is kind of boring because the robots, they don't really have fun with me. Like, we don't get to party. We don't get to, like, talk about boys. We don't, they're just kind of robots. Uh, and so I decided I needed, I needed a little bit more people in my life. And I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, and I said, OK, well, where's a cool place to work? I think the internet is kind of cool. Let's do that. Uh, I mean, I was a roboticist. The internet can't be that hard. <laughs> uh, so I went and, and talked to the CEO of the coolest company in town. And I said, hi, I'd really like to work at your company. What do I need to do to work here? And he said, learn Node. OK, cool. So I went home, and I was like, I'm going to learn Node. Let's do this. I'm going to build an application. That's how I learn, et cetera, et cetera. And I got nowhere, right? Uh, this happens to all of us, right? We have no idea what we're doing because we don't know the words that we need, right? So I knew enough to say, OK, Node, it's a project, it's a thing. Go to the website, nodejs.org. I downloaded Node. And then I knew enough about the command line to say, well, like there's no application, so I don't double click on anything. I go to the command line and I go, N-O-D-E, enter. And what happens at that point? You get this carroty thing. It's like this little, you know, it like, looks like this. You see it also in the JavaScript console when you go uh, on a browser. And you're just looking at it, and it doesn't say anything. You're like, OK, so go, G-O, enter. And what does it say? It says undefined. And you're like, OK, this doesn't work for me at all. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I don't have the words. I don't have the vocabulary to use to say, how do, this, how do I make this thing work? Right? So what do you do next? You go online, go to Google, Stack Overflow, blog posts, whatever, and you start looking for help. Pro tip, carity thing in Node does not produce any useful results. Uh, there's just nothing in there. Like, again, no vocabulary, no way for me to say, I have no idea what I'm doing. I need help. Uh, so, and then on top of that, this was at the beginning of 2012, when Node was super new. Like, it, I mean, it had been around for a couple of years, but it was still really brand new, to the point where any tutorials I found, 
if it was more than six, six months old, it was completely out of date, right? Like, this, this isn't even useful to me. So, whatever, I still try, right? I find some things and I start playing around and I'm like, oh, this is cool, but I'm, I, uh, care anything? Help? So it, I, at, at that point, I realized I needed more people in my life. I needed to start asking questions. So I went to a local meetup, right? Like that's, that's a great way to start meeting people, local developers in your community, and you can actually talk to them and you can say, so look, here's my terminal. N-O-D-E, enter, carity thing. And they go, oh, that's the REPL. Yes, yes, that's the read, eval, print loop. That's how we do all of our like on-demand type stuff. What you really want is you want a separate file that then you can run node file and then it runs in magic and you're like, oh my God, why did nobody tell me this? Didn't understand anything. Uh, but that's okay, it's okay because you, you go and you talk to these people and you can actually they have been there at least enough that they can kind of read your mind a little bit. So you're like, care anything? And then they're like, yeah, no, REPL, that's the word. And you're like, ah, cool. And at the same time, I was trying to build this app and I was like, okay, I have this app and I want it to store data and I know I need a database, uh, but I've only ever used MySQL before because that's what I used when I was hacking around my WordPress blog. Is that what I want to use? And whatever you want to say about databases and blah, blah, blah. At, this, at the time, what I needed was MongoDB, and it was the perfect solution. Again, talking to people in person, being able to use words that didn't make any sense in, to Google, but made sense to people, made a huge difference. So empowered with all of this incredible knowledge, I went back to my app, and I was like, OK, I'm building this app. I've got Mongoose, and I've got Express, and how do I integrate these things? I don't know, but now I have keywords that I can ask Google. So, you know, you give some Mongo node, there's this wonderful module called Mongoose, and then they have a website, and you can like, they have, they have code samples, and you're like, yes, perfect, code samples, copy, paste, I expect magic to happen, and no magic happens, and you're like, well, why isn't this working? And you're like, oh, I don't know, so, you know, you just don't have the concepts fully integrated into understanding how this is all supposed to come together. So you go back, and maybe your, your local meetup, like they only meet once a month or something like that, so you, you need to expand your group of people to ask questions. So what did, we, what did I do? I went on to IRC. So if you don't know what IRC is, it's this amazing technology that's been around apparently forever, but I didn't hear about it until 2012. And it was on IRC that I found the MongooseJS channel, and I was like, hi, I'm using your thing. I think it's the right thing for me, but it's not working in my stuff. And they're like, all right, send us your code. And I did what every single new person does. I copied and pasted all of my code into IRC, and it was just like 25 lines of stuff, and someone said, oh god, please don't do that again. And then I learned about a thing called Pastebin. That was super useful. Uh, and then, of course, gists and et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I did, I did the thing that everybody does. And then I got very politely yelled at, don't do that again. OK. So, but still, being able to share my code with some, someone else from a larger community, people who are from all over the world, not just my local community, because, you know, when you're hacking at 2 a.m., sometimes your friends aren't awake at 2 a.m., but somebody in Germany might be. Uh, and that's awesome, because then they can kind of give you this feedback, and they give you, they share more appropriate vocabulary with you, and then you understand the concepts, you understand how things link together. And it's really awesome. And so you take all this knowledge, and you're still going to mess up, right? This, if you're not messing up, you're not doing engineering. Just FYI. This is how it works. You do good, you mess up, you succeed, you know, it's just this cycle, and you just kind of keep moving forward. But, but, this is a turning point, right? Because these concepts are coming together enough, and you've, you've grown your community enough to the point where you're like, okay, whenever I have a problem, I might not know what it is, and I might not know how to fix it, but I at least know what to ask, where to ask, and who to ask, right? Go into IRC, go to your friends, go to your meetup, whatever, know exactly the magical keywords to get the thing out of Google, Stack Overflow, Fantastic. So now you can actually keep moving forward and you're like, yes, I got this. I got this. 
And you find this point at which you're like, wow, this is actually really cool. This is so fun. I love this, but I'm doing this on the side. I have like another job and it's sucking all the life out of me because I really just want to play with Node all the time. Maybe I can get a job in Node. Yes, that's totally a perfect idea. So you go and you, I mean, at some point you get to the point where you are, you know enough information that you can be a junior developer, right? And at that point, junior developers are useful. They're useful because you can tell them exactly what to do, and you don't have to pay them very much money, and you can still move, up, move forward with your product. So you bring a junior developer on board. Yeah, you have to train them a little bit, but you get to train them doing exactly what you want them to do. So from a junior developer perspective, you're like, oh my goodness, now I have this opportunity to get paid while I learn. Awesome. For me, I got a job as an intern. I, was, I wasn't even a junior developer yet. I just got enough to be an intern. I was getting paid $500 a week, which is not very much at all. And especially for someone who was coming from robotics, it was kind of a blow to the system and a blow to the ego. But I was like, you know what? It's worth it. This is going to be OK. I'm going to make it work. So fantastic. You start working. You start learning. And then you get to this point where you're like, well, this is super fun, but I'm not exactly learning all the things that I want to learn. I'm learning the things that my employer is telling me to learn. And that's fine, because at least for me, I, I was working at a consulting company, so I got to see a little bit of PHP, I got to see a little bit of Node, I got to see a little bit of front-end stuff. I was convinced I was going to be a back-end developer because I did robotics. And then I was like, hey, CSS, as annoying as it can be, is actually really cool because you get to like, see stuff and you get to move things and floats and divs and wow. And so at that point, I kind of transitioned to being more of a front-end person, but still loving the Node. And I kind of like to think of it as like a buffet of learning. You know, you go in and you just get a little bit of each of these little things. But I still felt like I was missing something. I was like, okay, yes, this is our stack at this company, but I know that there's more. I keep hearing these rumors of these single page applications and all this other stuff. Where do you go to learn that? Where do you go to learn that? You come into one of these, right? This is where you find out about all of those things that you knew you were missing out on something, but you didn't know what it was. How many of you have learned something new that you didn't realize even existed since being here? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's fantastic. You get what you're missing, right? And it, it's like drinking from a fire hose. It's like trying to get a little sip of water, and then it's just like pfft, right in your face. And you're like, oh my goodness gracious. But it's totally worth it because then you get super excited about all of this stuff. For me, my very first conference was NodeConf Summer Camp 2012. I, I went to this conference hoping to learn more about the event loop. Apparently, there's going to be a talk about the event loop later. I'm totally going to that. Uh, but at this conference, I didn't learn about the event loop. I learned about Node Core and domains and error handling. And I was like, whoa, 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 I just want to learn about, <laughs> I just want to learn about the event loop, please. I'm just new to this. But there was another really important aspect of going to a conference. I learned about people. I met people. I met all of these incredible people that have completely changed my life. Every conference I go to, I meet new people. And it's incredible. I become really good friends with these people. So as a side note, if there's nothing else that you get out of this entire conference, nothing at all, because let's be real, you can watch these videos at home later. If there's nothing else that you get out of this conference, walk away with at least five Twitter handles. Five Twitter handles of people that you are going to hang out with and talk to on Twitter. If you don't like Twitter, use Facebook or email. I don't care. But make sure that you get to know somebody else, because these people that are sitting in this room with you, they're going to help you get your job your next job. They're going to help you when you have a bad day and they'll send you funny cat gifs. Like, super awesome. These people are really going to change your life right here, the ones that are sitting right next to you. And those of you following along at home, come to a conference and let this like totally transform you. OK, coming back. So you're talking to these people. You're at this amazing conference. And you're like, there's so much cool technology. Oh my goodness, I totally want to play with this. When do you do that? What do you do with all of that cool technology? You start working on it on your own. And yeah, it kind of stinks that you, get, you don't always get to take all of the cool technology back to work with you. But 
let me just tell you a little bit. Like, there's a really good opportunity to, like, if you can find the time to hack on things on your own, you, become, you expose yourself to a whole bunch of other stuff, right? And then you get to use all of these people that you met at this conference where you learned about all this stuff, and you can ask them, hey, can you take a look at my code? Because here's the thing about open source. It's not, it's not about contributing to jQuery or Node Core. It's about taking literally your source and you're opening it up. You're just sharing your stuff on GitHub. It doesn't need to be anything like, whoa, magical, like life-changing. It just needs to be some code. Show it to somebody. Let somebody else say, hey, why did you do that? What was your, what, what was your like, inspiration for this? How did you figure that out? That was really cool. Like, getting, some, getting feedback on your code from somebody else is super useful. So for me, I was at this conference, and I was like talking to somebody, and they said to me, hey, you used to do robotics. You know what we're missing in Node? We don't have like a matrix module. And I was like, yeah, yeah you know, that's, that's true. There isn't a matrix model, module. And I used to do robotics, so matrices and I were like this. So I went ahead and started hacking on stuff. So you, you start hacking on things, and you're like, I mean, look, you're still going to keep messing up, and you're still going to like keep failing, and then you're going to succeed, and there are going to be those moments where you're like, oh my god, and then you're going like, to run around the office, because you know, or your bedroom, or whatever, because uh, it's so exciting that you're getting it. But the point is that you're playing with these things, and you kind of already are starting to get to know the concepts, and you're figuring all these things out, and it just starts to feel really good, because you're building confidence in yourself. And you're like, actually, I'm not a total noob anymore. This is awesome. I mean, you didn't teach Brendan Eich everything he knows, but you're starting to get somewhere, and you feel really good about it. And these concepts are just gelling really well, and you start to experiment a little bit, right? Like, what happens when people get a little too, like, confident? They start to get a little, like, experimental, like, hey, I wonder what happens if I do this thing. And it's kind of scary, and it's not always going to work, but every once in a while it will. Also at, at NodeConf, I met this guy named Chris Williams. You may have heard of him. He kind of started the whole JSConf thing. Uh, but he's also into robots. And he, I remember being at this conference, and I was just talking to him, and I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, robots are kind of cool, I guess. Uh, whatever. And then, and then he DM'd me later, and he was like, oh my god, wait, you mean you used to do robotics like full time? What are you doing right now? Why are you in this whole web thing? We need to be working together. Like, I do this thing called NodeBots. It's not really a thing yet, but I want it to be. I need your help. <laughs> and so I said, OK, that sounds kind of crazy. Maybe I can, so like afterwards, as I'm building this matrix module, I was like, oh, wait, maybe this is an opportunity for me to kind of segue into that. That's kind of cool. And like these concepts, are so solid, and I have all this extra background information from what I used to do, like things that excite me just in general. And you, you keep experimenting, and you keep playing around, and eventually something starts to stick. Something starts to stick real well. And for me, this was my, my vector module. Not very many people use it, but it's actually like really cool how basically it's a, it's a robotics focused matrix module, specifically for robots. It's sp specifically for matrices. But I started building some really cool robots with it. And as you're building these things, you're like, hey, people are starting to notice this stuff. They start to use your stuff. And whatever it is that you're building, at some point, it's going to be successful enough that people are going to notice, because people are going to check it out. You're sharing your code, right? You're putting it all out in open source. People are going to notice. I'll never forget the day I got an, an IM from, or a, a tweet from Rick Waldron, who I'd never met at the time, or by that point. And if you don't know who Rick Waldron is, he's on TC39. He's on the board of jQuery. He wrote Johnny5, which is like a jQuery for hardware. This is a guy that I just like totally, I like bow down to him, like, oh my goodness, you are, you know JavaScript. I don't know JavaScript, but you know JavaScript. And you're saying that my code is really awesome? This is, this is wild. Like, how did that happen? How did I get here? And you, know, you completely forget about all of the hard work that you went through trying to get there. 
But from that point, you start to realize that as you're writing about your stuff, like you write blog posts, you go to workshops, you lead workshops, this stuff that you didn't ever think was even remotely possible, you're standing up and sharing your knowledge. And people are starting to think like, you're an expert. They start asking you for help, right? You're the one who they're like waiting for on IRC, like, hey, hey, there you are. Hey, I have all these questions. Oh my God, can you please help me? Hey, here's all of my code. <laughs> Hold on, use it just please. Um, people start to notice your expertise, and that's really exciting. For me, I started doing NodeBots, and NodeBots completely took off. We had a workshop at JSConf, we had another workshop at the next JSConf, we had International NodeBots Day twice. There are all of these incredible events, and more stuff is coming. But I want to hit home on this one thing. As you start to build expertise, as people start to notice all of these things that you're contributing, other people outside of your necessary little niche are going to start noticing too. Because as you become more of an expert, as you start to actually know what you're doing, other people are gonna want to start bringing you on board. I stopped interviewing at this point. I, I don't really send my resume out anymore. I get other people calling me. And it's really, like, I don't mean to sound like, oh, look at me, I'm so awesome. No, what I'm saying is other people are noticing that you, yes, you, are really quite good at what you're doing, believe it or not. And they start calling you up and saying, hey, like maybe they're Isaac Schluter, the BDFL of Node, aka the leader of the Node project at the time, saying, hi, I really like the things that you're doing. I'm starting this new company called NPM Inc. Do you want to come on board? And you have this moment where you're just like, I'm a total noob, right? <laughs> and no, you're not. You're not a noob anymore. You've gone from here and you're slowly making your way up, you know, very slowly, but you're there. You're, you're, you're sharing your stuff everywhere. Everybody's already asking you for help. How is it so much harder of an idea for somebody to say, please come on board, I want to pay you to work for me and nobody else? That's a pretty amazing, amazing opportunity. And there gets to be this point at which you realize, despite every single little piece of imposter syndrome that sits in your head saying, you have no right to be up here, you, you say that you've got to be up here, because if you don't share, then who will? And you realize that you have received so much from this community, so very, very much. They put up with your ridiculous IRC logs, and they put up with your silly questions of, care anything? <laughs> and you realize that you're not alone, and you've got to give back. You have to give back. Somebody needs to hear your story. So I want you to know that no matter where you are on this scale, seriously, anywhere you are, and believe me, at some point you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I know everything there is to know about Angular or Ember or whatever, and then someone's gonna throw a brand new framework at you and you're gonna start at zero all over again and you're gonna continually sit, I have no idea what I'm doing. I want you to remember this one major thing we're in this together. We're all in this together. And wherever you are, we are with you. I'm with you, you're with me. We're in this together. Sorry, you're stuck. And it's really important to remember that JavaScript is so much more than syntax. It's not about semicolons or tabs versus spaces or any of that. It's, it's frankly, it's all of us. Thank you very much.